Our home is fabulous. It is full of goodness and love. Every living creature has experienced happiness, joy, enchantment, and love at least once in their life. However, every living being has also experienced fear. Fear is the primary defense mechanism that has helped species survive in different periods on our planet. Thanks to it, we can avoid dangers that always cross our paths. In our time, Earth is also a frightening place, but most of the reasons that can cause fear are related to human creation. However, it was not always like this. In the past, our planet was inhabited by creatures that instilled fear in their neighbors. In this video, you will learn about the most terrifying creatures that inhabited our planet during the age of dinosaurs. Some of them lived in the depths of oceans and seas, ruling the aquatic world. Others, with their sharp and numerous teeth, tore apart creatures on land. There were also those that, soaring high in the sky, could spot even the most camouflaged lizard. We will delve into more details about the most interesting representatives of these creatures. For example, we will study one of the main carnivorous dinosaurs, Allosaurus. We'll find out why Leoplerodon was not as large as you might think. And using the example of Spinosaurus battles, we'll explore if there truly was no equal to it. This is the Space Progress Channel, and we are embarking on a terrifying journey into the past of our Earth. And we'll start with the deep sea locations. Oceans are incredibly vast. When you are near one, you feel absolutely helpless. A person swimming in the ocean looks like a small and useless grain of sand. This cannot be said for the marine inhabitants. Large and small denizens of the ocean are the real cogs in the vast marine world. Each of them has its place, and each performs its crucial function in the aquatic realm. Some of them are entirely harmless, but there are also those that have inspired and continue to inspire prehistoric terror. They are incomparable to anything else in this world. The first marine inhabitants appeared a long time ago. Initially, there was no hostility among them, as each fed on oceanic vegetation. However, later some of these creatures began to hunt others. That's how our nature dictated. Some animal species had to survive by consuming others. There were organisms that had to serve as prey for predators and nothing more. This is how the aquatic ecosystem began to develop. Some were born to eat plants and others to consume their kind. Millions of years ago, during the Devonian period, the Crossopterygian fish made an evolutionary leap and ventured onto land as amphibians. Their descendants populated all continents and even conquered the sky, but some returned to where it all began, to the aquatic element. These animals are called secondarily aquatic because they had to readjust to the aquatic way of life. Independently, they acquired similar adaptations because their new habitat, the sea, was universal. The first to return to the marine environment were reptiles. Their dawn corresponds to the Mesozoic era. One of the most important representatives were ichthyosaurs. They appeared millions of years before the first dinosaurs and became the true rulers of the seas. The earliest ancestors of fish lizards appeared approximately 248 million years ago, when the planet was just recovering from the most powerful stress it had ever faced, a massive mass extinction. Just a few million years ago, 90% of marine and 70% of terrestrial animal species were wiped off the face of the Earth. Typically, the most resilient were small creatures because they didn't need much food and they could hide anywhere. The first link in the chain of ichthyosaur evolution was the marine reptile Cartorhynchus. It was only about 40 centimeters long. Despite its fairly attractive appearance, it was from this creature that the first types of ichthyosaurs emerged. The largest of them were named Shastasaurus. They were truly incredible giants, reaching lengths of up to 20 meters. Surprisingly, they were considered some of the safest marine creatures, they fed on small fish and squid, resembling gentle giants, similar to our whales. However, to sustain themselves, they had to consume a truly enormous amount of small fish. There were smaller ichthyosaurs, but they were much more dangerous. Stenopterygius was one of them. They populated our Earth about 180 million years ago. Being four meters long, they were big enthusiasts of feasting on fish. Generally, it's challenging to list all the types of ichthyosaurs, as there were dozens of them. Some attacked creatures much larger than themselves. The bloodthirstiness of these creatures can be understood. They had to survive somehow. 
Today, there are still many unexplored oceanic places on the planet. Somewhere far beneath the water's surface, several kilometers away, there are real alien worlds. Unknown creatures inhabit them. The depths of the seas have always changed over millions of years, and the animals living in them gradually adapted and evolved. Here is one of the creatures dwelling somewhere in the depths of the world's oceans today, the goblin shark, and it's a very strange creature. It is a deep sea, slow moving species that can grow almost up to four meters in length. Like other sharks, the goblin shark can sense animals with its electrosensitive organs and has a multitude of teeth. Unlike other sharks, the goblin has teeth adapted for catching prey and teeth adapted for cracking the shells of crustaceans. If you can imagine such a gigantic monster rushing straight at you, it would be a very frightening sight. But let's go back to ancient times. The creatures encountered there were much scarier. In the Jurassic period, after ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs took control of the oceans. They had barrel-shaped bodies and swam using four fins that resembled flippers. The new predators included both versatile hunters preying on fish and massive fish lizards with huge heads and incredibly powerful jaws. According to some estimates, their body length could reach 15 meters. At the end of the Jurassic period, thalatosaurs became widespread, reaching lengths of up to 6 meters. All these creatures were muscular and robust, with some having very large eyes. Their jaws were sharpened for catching mollusks. In the Cretaceous period, large ichthyosaurs called platypyrigiuses appeared, larger than the modern great white shark. With a length of up to 9 meters, they were powerful predators with long jaws capable of capturing almost any prey. The last of the platyterigises disappeared more than 30 million years before the extinction of dinosaurs, causing confusion among many scientists. The probable cause of ichthyosaur extinction is related to climate change and internal Earth processes. They lived during massive geological shifts when supercontinents began to break into continents and islands leading to the disappearance of many shallow marine pathways around the world. The aquatic world was a frightening place to inhabit. However, it was much scarier to live on land, especially after the emergence of the first ancestors of dinosaurs. Some instilled fear with their size, while others with their skills. Now, let's delve into the most toothy ones. For dinosaurs, teeth and claws were crucial survival tools. Ancient reptiles couldn't survive without teeth. But first, let's understand how teeth appeared in beings that were among the first on Earth. The earliest vertebrates lacked teeth and, like modern lampreys, relied on horn-like projections on their tongues. But time passed, eras and periods succeeded each other, several mass extinctions occurred, and the Mesozoic Era arrived, known as the Age of Dinosaurs and Mammals. Here, a variety of creatures could compete with each other in terms of the quantity and size of their jaws. For some representatives of that time, teeth were as small as needles, while for others, they were as large as modern kitchen knives. Here, we'll focus on the owners of the largest, smallest, and most unusual teeth. Dinosaur teeth were highly diverse. The size and shape of teeth depended on the lifestyle of the reptiles and their preferences. Sharp and straight teeth of meat-eating dinosaurs acted like spears. The predator impaled its prey on the teeth and then either tore it into pieces or swallowed it whole. Teeth anchored in the jaws were adapted for active combat, characteristic of dinosaurs that preferred hunting large prey. Teeth with worn upper surfaces or serrations like those of Triceratops indicate vegetarian preferences. Dinosaur teeth with scoop-like elements were used for stripping leaves. Such teeth are characteristic of sauropods. Have you ever wondered why the T-Rex looks terrifying? The answer is obvious. Its massive, sharp teeth are intimidating and inspire terror. By size, shape, curvature, wear, and other details of the teeth, one can determine what and how the lizard fed, as well as how it interacted with other animals and plants within its ecosystem. Tyrannosaurs were gigantic carnivorous lizards. To feed, they needed a large amount of meat, so they hunted big dinosaurs. The teeth of T-Rex had special reinforcing ridges. To facilitate the capture of prey, their teeth were inwardly curved within the jaws. Also, these teeth are considered the largest among all terrestrial predators. Considering their root, their length could reach 25 centimeters.
carnivorous terrestrial Spanosaurus also had huge teeth. On the front part of the jaw of a 15-meter dinosaur weighing seven tons, there were seven or eight pairs of sharp pointed teeth with a conical shape. Behind the front fangs were about 30 smaller teeth. The length of the Spanosaurus teeth could reach up to 15 centimeters. It fed on fish, so its teeth were smooth and allowed skewering fish on them. After impaling, the Spanosaurus immediately swallowed the fish. Despite its small size, the teeth of the Dromaeosaurus allowed it to tear pieces of flesh from prey much larger than itself. The predator's teeth resembled a saw. During the hunt, the Dromaeosaurus would thrust its teeth into the prey's flesh and then sharply turn its head to the side, tearing off a piece of flesh. Serrated teeth, resembling daggers, are characteristic of both active predators and scavengers. Due to its impressive teeth, the carnivorous Carcharodontosaurus, rivaling the size of the T-Rex, earned the name Shark-Toothed Lizard. Unlike the teeth of the T-Rex, their teeth were not reinforced and resembled huge razors. The jaws of this predator were weaker, compensated by the length of the teeth and their specific shape. The teeth of this lizard resembled the teeth of a great white shark protruding from the sides with sharp edges. The jaws of the Allosaurus contained approximately 64 teeth that gradually decreased in size towards the throat. If you compare the skull of the Allosaurus with that of the Tyrannosaurus, you'll notice that the teeth of the Allosaurus are proportionally smaller. Allosaurs could open their jaws very wide and possibly use their short teeth like saw blades. Additionally, the Allosaurus could tear off chunks of flesh using cutting movements of its entire head. On the other hand, the teeth of Diplodocus and Shunosaurus resembled rakes. They were not suitable for chewing food in any way. With rake-like teeth, these dinosaurs would strip and peel leaves, swallowing them without chewing. Digestion occurred in the stomach and intestines. In contrast, the teeth of other giants, sauropods, resembled chisels. Sauropods also did not chew their food. Interestingly, before plucking leaves, they swallowed stones. These stones allowed them to swallow leaves. And then, in the stomach, these leaves were mashed into a pulp by the stones. For example, Triceratops had up to 800 teeth in its mouth. When closing its jaws, the teeth would interlock, slicing and grinding food into pieces. Triceratops would tear off plant food using its beak. Its scissor-like teeth were constantly replaced. Their teeth grew in 36 to 40 rows in each part of the jaw. Diplodocus had approximately 40 small peg-like teeth located at the front of its jaw. These long and thin teeth were replaced at a rate of one tooth every 35 days. The tip of the tooth formed a rounded triangle, aiding in separating leaves from longer branch segments. Diplodocus ate constantly, only pausing for nightly rest. Therefore, its teeth quickly wore out and fell out. However, new teeth instantly grew in place of the old ones. Marine animals also boasted their own set of teeth. The teeth of pliosaurs are distinctive and recognizable. In cross-section, they are not round but triangular, with cutting edges. This structure allowed them to inflict wounds on prey or enemies efficiently, increasing the blood flow to the victim, ultimately causing rapid weakening due to significant blood loss. In Leoplodon, the teeth were rounded. The powerful jaws of the lizard acted as a kind of press. The prey was subjected to incredible pressure and the end was inevitable. Creatures soaring high in the sky also had teeth that could grasp prey both on land and in the air. Among them were pterosaurs. Some pterosaurs were toothless, such as Peranodon. Other species of pterosaurs had teeth. Ramphorhynchus, for example, often had teeth that differed in structure from other types of pterosaurs. For instance, some had teeth on the palate. In later groups of pterosaurs, teeth mainly became conical. Front teeth were often longer, forming a grip on the prey in the transversely expanded tips of the jaws. However, the sizes and positions were very different among different species. The teeth were each in their own socket and during tooth replacement, they grew behind rather than below. Paradactyls had curved teeth for eating meat, while Pyridostro used jaws with numerous needle-like teeth as a filter to separate captured underwater inhabitants from the water. Pterodactyls had over a thousand bristle-like teeth. By the way, about birds, far from all of them had a large number of teeth. 
Some instilled fear in completely different ways, such as with incredibly large wingspans or unusual shapes. Let's learn more about them. The first known large animals to take to the skies were pterosaurs. For 150 million years, dozens, perhaps hundreds, of these flying reptiles controlled the sky. Among them were animals comparable in size to modern birds, and there were those next to which some airplane models would be absolutely identical. Their evolution sometimes took on very interesting and even whimsical forms. We want to talk about the most popular and at the same time unknown to the general public features of these aerial predators. Paradactyl for many, this name is associated with all parasaurs in general. Most likely, this happened because the paradactyl was first identified as a flying lizard and then given its own name. For many years in popular culture, the concept of paradactyl became synonymous with the definition of parasaur. They were small reptiles, no more than one meter in size. Most likely, they hunted for fish and small terrestrial animals. Being the rulers of the sky, they instilled fear in other inhabitants of the sky and land. And gathering in flocks, they could resist even a large dinosaur. These creatures lived about 150 million years ago. Have you seen crests on the heads of flying creatures from the Mesozoic era? So, the first creature to have such crests was Peronodon. It had a crest made of bone and soft tissue on its head. These small flying lizards lived about 150 million years ago. The wingspan rarely exceeded one meter, and the skull size was about 13 centimeters. The most tail-end representative of parasaurs was Ramphorhynchus. On average, its body length, including the tail, was about one meter, and it was the tail that was the main distinctive feature of this species. It was very long. This tail was reinforced with ligaments with a characteristic rhomboid tuft at the end. Most likely, the lifestyle of these creatures did not differ from the behavior of modern seabirds. They lived on the shores of seas and oceans and hunted for small fish by diving into the water. The shape of their teeth, which were needle-like and slightly inclined forward, indicates this method of feeding. Thalassodromes was truly an unimaginable creature. Even now, Looking at the reconstruction of this bird, it is hard to believe that nature could create such a thing. The main external difference of this large pterosaur was its huge crest, which occupied almost the entire surface of the skull. The total length of its body was about one and a half meters. These pterosaurs lived about 110 million years ago. Representatives of this family have become the heroes of many Hollywood blockbusters and children's cartoons about dinosaurs. They are called pteranodons. Fossilized remains of pteranodons have been discovered more than those of all other flying reptiles combined. That's why scientists have enough information to describe the appearance and behavior of these creatures. They were quite large animals. The wingspan of adult males could exceed five and a half meters while females had a wingspan of just under four meters. The beak of the Pteranodon was characterized by its considerable length and the complete absence of teeth. It is believed that their diet primarily consisted of fish and small crustaceans, which they caught from the water while in flight. After the end of the dinosaur era, many vacated ecological niches were occupied by birds, and this applied not only to the airspace, some of the largest terrestrial predators of that time became the predatory terror birds, but they permanently gave up the ability to fly for this. Therefore, we will not talk about them further, but about the birds that replaced pterosaurs in their familiar environment. Here too, giant forms were not left out. Many of the described species could easily hunt the ancestors of modern humans, and some of them became their prey. Argentavis was considered the largest bird to have ever existed for a long time. Its wingspan could reach six meters. As the name suggests, this giant bird inhabited the territory of modern Argentina. There is an opinion that Argentavis mainly fed on carrion. It could observe other predators and snatch prey from them by diving from a great height. The remains of Pelagornis sandersi were discovered in 1983 in the United States. These were the remains of a truly gigantic bird. The wingspan was about seven meters, and in the beak of Pelagornis, so-called pseudo-teeth or tooth-like spikes were found. With these sharp protrusions, the bird punctured the shells of mollusks. Its diet also included squid and various fish. Sanders's brother can be called Pelagornis chilensis. It inhabited the Atacama Desert in Chile. Only one specimen of the remains of this bird has been discovered so far, extinct about five million years ago. 
The predecessors of modern eagles were the teratornithids. The remains of this large predatory bird, over 70 centimeters tall, with a wingspan of up to three and a half meters, are found over a vast area in many states of North America. These birds became extinct about 10,000 years ago, and their main prey were not large animals, approximately the size of a modern rabbit. The bird held its prey with powerful claws and tore it apart with its sharp beak. Modern predatory birds feed in a similar way, Hast's eagle is considered the largest species of eagles. It inhabited only one of the New Zealand islands. And you won't believe it, but people could observe these birds live as recently as 600 years ago. Its main prey were large, non-flying birds that inhabited this region. The eagle dived onto its prey from a great height, at a speed of about 80 kilometers per hour. Such an attack can be compared to a huge stone falling on the head from a height of about 25 meters. The predator grabbed its prey with one paw and delivered a lethal blow to the neck or head with the other. Truly a real predator. Now let's get acquainted with individual representatives of the most terrifying creatures on our planet. To do this, let's go back to the Jurassic period. And the first hero will stand before you in all its power and bloodthirstiness. This hero will be the Allosaurus. It is indeed a terrifying representative of the Middle Mesozoic, but attractive enough to tell about. Let's start with the fact that the Allosaurus is a member of the Carnosaur genus. With a body length of nine meters, the Allosaurus weighed only two tons. Even for its relatively modest size, such a small weight was abnormally light. But there was a reason for this. The Allosaurus was hollow inside, and for a predator, this was probably an advantage rather than a disadvantage. Due to its lightweight, it could quickly pursue its prey, leaving almost no chance of escape. The reptile's internal space was mostly occupied by air sacs. Even its bones were pneumatized. They contained empty spaces. All these cavities were interconnected and connected to the lungs, forming a complex system through which air circulated. Thanks to this system, the dinosaur was oxygenated both during inhalation and exhalation. Modern birds use the same mechanism of dual breathing. This system made the Allosaurus incredibly enduring compared to the absolute majority of dinosaurs. Allosaurs attacked in a leap, reaching speeds of up to 35 kilometers per hour and pounced on the back of their prey, attempting to bite the neck vertebrae to immediately paralyze the prey. The force of its bite left deep non-through holes as evidenced by scratches and tooth marks on the bones of many herbivores. In general, Carnosaurs are a family of large and dangerous predators. They were the kings of the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. Inhabiting our planet during the Mesozoic era, they not only had no equals in ferocity, but also in size. Reaching lengths of up to 15 meters, the weight of predators from this family was approximately eight tons. This absolutely did not prevent them from making peculiar jumps and leaps, which helped the lizards in both hunting and clashes with other predators. From the Carnosaur family, several significant species originated, one of them is Monolophosaurus, a predatory dinosaur with a crest on its head. Its homeland was the future territory of China. Initially, Monolophosaurus was considered a basal theropod and belonged to the ancient group of megalosaurs. However, a 2010 study recognized it as a member of the Tetanurans group. The length of Monolophosaurus was estimated at five and a half meters and it weighed 475 kilograms. Its name translates to lizard with a single crest. This distant ancestor of the Allosaurus already instilled fear in the inhabitants of the Jurassic period with its bloodthirstiness and constant hunger. However, a constant sense of hunger was experienced by absolutely all Mesozoic dinosaurs, both herbivores and predators. By the way, Monolophosaurus hunted in packs, implying the presence of intellect. Here is another ancestor of the Allosaurus, the Synraptor. The length of this representative of the Carnosaur genus was 8 meters, the height was 3 meters, and the weight was 1,200 kilograms. Because of its name, many might think it belonged to the well-known Velociraptor, but that is not the case. This species of predator is interesting in that it was the main branch of Carnosaurs, which branched into several others. The Allosauride family continued to evolve, giving rise to the Zorophaganax. By the way, the translation of this name is very interesting. Master Eating Lizards. 
This hunter inhabited tropical and fairly humid areas. By the way, Zurifagonex remains the largest allosaurid found on land. It surpasses the largest allosaurus by a whole two meters. Another species belonging to large allosaurs is Epanterius. This animal could rival the size of the T-Rex itself and instilled terror in the inhabitants of the Jurassic period. It literally tore its opponents to pieces despite their strength. When scientists discovered the remains of this lizard, for a long time, it was believed to be a herbivorous sauropod, similar to Iguanodon. But, as they say, mistakes of paleontologists are a normal occurrence. As a result of complex mixtures of many subspecies and families, the main representative of this family emerged, the Allosaurus. Some of the ancestors of the Allosaurus were much smaller than the predator itself, while others were larger. However, the fact that the Allosaurus was at the top of the food chain alongside the Megalosaurus proves that this predator had to contend with many competitors. It is quite likely that Allosaurs were pack hunters. Gathering in packs, they hunted together for any prey, either tearing it apart in battle or pursuing it for an extended period until the victim surrendered. The most significant discoveries of Allosaurus were made in the famous dinosaur quarry in the state of Utah. The first excavations in the quarry began in 1927, but the first fossils from it were described by Charles Gilmore only in 1945. Mass excavations at the burial site started only in the 1960s. As a result, 12,000 bones were extracted, belonging to 74 individuals of different species, including 46 allosaurs. It is believed that this place was a giant swamp of the Jurassic period, which, through mineralization and fossilization, preserved thousands of dinosaur bones. Among them were found the remains of Ceratosaurus, five Camarasaurus, four Stegosaurus, five Camptosaurus, and other smaller animals. Two of them were classified into their own genera, Styracosaurus and Marchosaurus. In this place, a massive accumulation of dinosaur bones from at least 11 genera of late Jurassic dinosaurs of the Morrison Formation was preserved. Allosaurus bones of different ages were also found there, ranging from 3-meter adolescents to 8-meter adults. It is quite likely that this place was a swamp. Herbivores, accidentally getting stuck in this place, had no way to escape predators noticing easy prey attacked the victim. But in the end, they themselves got trapped in the sticky mud and perished. Allosaurs could come to this place with entire families and stay here forever. Here is another representative of horrifying creatures that inhabited millions of years ago. This is Liopleurodon. Liopleurodon lived in the Jurassic period. It was the main predator of the seas of the middle and late Jurassic that covered Europe. For a long time, everyone thought that the size of Leo was colossal. Scientists assumed that it reached a length of 25 meters. However, recent studies have shown that all of this was a lie. The real size of this reptile is much smaller, approximately 6 meters. And the largest species, Leopleurodon ferox, grew to be 6 and a half meters. Leopleurodon was a medium-sized pleosaur. Huge flippers suggest that it was an excellent swimmer a characteristic feature of all plesiosaurs. A large skull with many teeth characterizes it as an aggressive predator. This predator first attracted public attention in 1999 when it was portrayed in an episode of the BBC series Walking with Dinosaurs as a huge predator reaching 25 meters in length and weighing 150 tons. This mistaken opinion was based on very fragmentary remains of this species which were reclassified as the genus Pleosaurus macromerus in 2004. However, it was later precisely established that its sizes were not so massive and its weight was about two tons. Despite not being as large as initially thought, this reptile was quite intimidating to other underwater inhabitants. Its teeth were sufficiently large, about 15 centimeters in size. In shape, they were round in cross-section, forming a kind of rosette at the tips of the jaws. External nostrils did not serve for breathing. While swimming, water entered through internal nostrils and exited through external nostrils. The water flow passed through the Jacobson's organ, allowing Leo to smell the water. They swam using huge flippers, waving them like birds. In addition, they had developed protection. 
Beneath their skin were sturdy bony plates that helped avoid injuries in collisions with other denizens of the underwater world and protected internal organs from the teeth of attacking reptiles. The preferred prey of the Liopleurodon was medium-sized fish. For it, this was an easy catch that did not require high energy expenditure and pursuit. However, it could also consume fish approximately the same size as itself. Thanks to its large fins, it could quickly accelerate, allowing it to catch up with prey. Its streamlined body literally sliced through the water. And now, let's imagine what the battles of the most terrible dinosaurs looked like. Let's take the Spinosaurus as an example. It struck terror into the inhabitants of the Cretaceous period, unmatched in size, strength and veracity. It not only swam well, but also moved on land with ease. Each of the inhabitants of that time risked falling into its jaws. Spinosaurus are the African king of the Cretaceous era. But were there really no equals for Spinosaurus in a duel for prey or dominance? Let's see. We don't deny that this huge lizard was powerful and bloodthirsty, but it still had its weaknesses. Its most vulnerable spot was its large sail. This part of the body was located on its back. The purpose of the sail remains a mystery to many to this day. The Spinosaurus sail could resemble the fin of a shark in function, aiding hydrodynamics. The sail helped corral various fish into spherical traps, and the lizard found it convenient to swallow a large amount of food at once. Also, the Spinosaurus used its tail to stun its prey, similar to how a hammerhead shark does. The sail could also contribute to movement in the water, counteracting the current. But for battles with other predators, this sail was not just useless. It could even hinder its owner. So let's suppose the Spinosaurus roamed the forests of the Mesozoic and encountered a fierce Carcharodontosaurus. All the advantages of the Spinosaurus are evident, or rather, on its snout and strength. However, there could be pitfalls. The true size of the Spinosaurus was 15 meters, while the length of the Carcharodontosaurus was 14 and a half meters. The difference was only a couple of dozen centimeters, not that significant for such monsters. The weight of the Spinosaurus was 7-8 tons, while the weight of the Carcharodontosaurus was 9 tons. The absence of a sail gave an advantage to the Carcharodontosaurus. This sail helped Spinosaurids attract mates and played a role in regulation of its temperature. However, it is unlikely to attract the attention of the Carcharodontosaurus. The bite force was once again in favor of the Carcharodontosaurus. The jaws of the Spinosaurus had rather weak muscles attached to them and its teeth were strictly for fish or small dinosaurs. In contrast, the jaws of its competitor had strong muscles attached, and it had large teeth that helped grip and then penetrate the skin and flesh of the prey. Here is a comparison of the teeth of these monsters. But the Spinosaurus had a significant advantage, its front limbs. It possesses some of the largest forelimbs among dinosaurs. They were relatively powerful compared to other dinosaurs. This cannot be said for the Carcharodontosaurus. Recent studies have shown that the forelimbs of this terrestrial theropod were almost the same size as those of the Tyrannosaurus, meaning they were relatively small. The advantage of the Carcharodontosaurus lay in its speed of movement and agility. Unfortunately, the sail of the Spinosaurus hindered its ability to move quickly. The Spinosaurus had a speed of 35 kilometers per hour, while the Carcharodontosaurus could reach almost 50 kilometers per hour. In the end, there is a 70% probability of victory for the Carcharodontosaurus. Now, let's consider the battle between the Spinosaurus and the Sarcosuchus. Both reptiles fed on aquatic creatures and predominantly inhabited areas near freshwater bodies. Adult individuals of these reptiles sometimes attacked herbivorous dinosaurs that entered their territory. The largest representative of Sarcosuchus, Sarcosuchus imperator, reached 12 meters, while the Spinosaurus was 15 meters. It is also worth noting that due to the growth advantage, the Spinosaurus had a better chance of reaching vulnerable parts of the opponent's body. The weight, however, was slightly in favor of Sarcosuchus, but only by one ton. Despite Sarcosuchus having a shorter body, it was denser and more balanced. The Spinosaurus was taller than its opponent, a key factor determining the course of this battle. Spinosaurs belong to the group of other theropods and rise six meters above the ground. Sarcosuchus, with a height of one and a half meters, moved like modern crocodiles, crawling on all fours. 
This difference in height negatively affected not only the ability to observe the opponent, but also affected maneuverability and the attack area. In fact, during a confrontation, Sarkosuchus could only attack the legs of the opponent, attempting to make it lose balance and fall. The Spinosaurus, on the other hand, could attack the opponent from all sides. However, due to Sarkosuchus's height, the Spinosaurus was forced to always be in a crouched position, putting additional strain on its legs. Because of its needle-like teeth designed for catching fish, even with tightly closed jaws, the Spinosaurus' teeth did not allow it to hold on to a large opponent. Thus, crocodiles would constantly break free and attack again. It is also worth noting that Sarkosuchus had a massive bony knob on its upper jaw, which could be used as a hook for the opponent's legs. The additional structures on the back of the Spinosaurus did not give it an advantage in battle. Moreover, during a fall on its side, the crest increased the risk of spinal injury. Since blood vessels passed through the lower part of the crest, it became an additional vulnerable spot when falling. However, it is worth noting that if the Spinosaurus stood on its hind legs, it did not affect him in any way, as Sarkosuchus simply could not reach its crest. As a result, the probability of victory for the Spinosaurus is 70%, while for Sarkosuchus, it's 30%. Another battle, Spinosaurus against the fear of the Jurassic period, Tyrannosaurus rex. Tyrannosaurus is extremely cunning and genetically more advanced. In terms of hunting and killing, it is evident that Tyrannosaurus is more agile and nimble compared to the Spinosaurus. The Spinosaurus, with its sail on its back, as always, makes it less maneuverable. The Tyrannosaurus has absorbed the best qualities of the most formidable and dangerous predators, making it the dominant predator. In terms of weight and size, it does not yield to the Spinosaurus. Moreover, thanks to its mobility, the T-Rex could easily jump on the Spinosaurus. Developed intellectual abilities allowed it to quickly strategize in battle and occupy the most inconvenient positions for attack. In addition, it has incredible strength and endurance. It is indeed an incredibly strong opponent for any dinosaur, including the Spinosaurus. We estimate the likelihood of Spinosaurus losing at 90%. It simply had almost no chance. However, it's not all bad, and the Spinosaurus was very lucky. In fact, these two monsters could not meet, as when the Tyrannosaurus rex inhabited the Earth, the Spinosaurus was already extinct. There was a difference of 30 million years between them. And finally, we present to you the duel between the Spinosaurus and the Megalodon. This giant shark instilled fear in all marine inhabitants, but could it strike fear into the Spinosaurus if they coexisted in the same era? Of course, in reality, these creatures could not have intersected, the Megalodon inhabited seas and oceans while the Spinosaurus lived near freshwater lakes and rivers. But if a meeting did occur, which side would emerge victorious? Let's first compare the sizes of these predators. As we've already determined, the Spinosaurus was 15 meters in length and the Megalodon was also 15 meters. However, when it comes to weight, it's a completely different story. The Megalodon's weight could reach up to 45 tons, while the Spinosaurus could only boast 7 tons. While the Spinosaurus was a good swimmer, its skills were evidently insufficient to compare with the Megalodon. The Megalodon's entire life was underwater, whereas the Spinosaurus only occasionally dipped into the water mostly to catch fish. The battle between these two monsters, for the sake of fairness, would not be too prolonged. Let's assume they met in water suitable for both freshwater and marine inhabitants. The Spinosaurus's jaws were designed for catching small fish. Its teeth would not inflict serious wounds on such a massive shark. Moreover, the Megalodon had very thick and robust skin, acting as a living shield. The Spinosaurus's mobility underwater also leaves much to be desired. The Megalodon was slightly more agile than its opponent due to its positioned fins and tail, as well as its rounded shape. In addition, the familiar aquatic environment would give it a significant advantage. However, one should not expect the Megalodon to make strong, dynamic movements. It was also a relatively immobile creature due to its size. Look at the jaws of modern white sharks. They can leave marks even on metallic structures, and the teeth of the Megalodon could easily bite through the iron frame of a ship. By the way, the Spinosaurus did not have such an advantage. 
In the end, with an 80% probability, victory would go to the Megalodon. However, if the confrontation took place on land, the Spinosaurus would obviously only have to exert effort in consuming the deceased Megalodon.